deserve all the praise, all the glory. All of it belongs to you, Lord. Today, Father, as we gather before your presence another time, dear God, we just want to thank you. We want to lift you up. We praise, magnify, and adore your name. Because you are great, O oh God. You are great and greatly to be praised. We praise your holy name. Because you have been good to us. You have kept up, kept us alive. Even up to this point, O oh God. And you have given us one more time. Another day. That we can use to magnify you. To live for you. To praise you to obey you Lord we thank you for this gift of life we will never take it for granted oh God help us father that even as we listen to your word today that it will become meat to our lives it will become food that will help us to grow in the fear and in the knowledge of you mighty God it is our desire to grow. It is our desire to be all that we can be in you, O Lord. Help us this day. Help us, Lord. Thank you for your protection, your guidance, everything that you have been doing in our lives, O God. We give you praise. Lord, I pray now that you would bless your people and cause them, O oh God, to prosper. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just bless your name today, Father. Thank you, God. Lord, even as we're about to go into your word now, take charge of the airwaves and let your word go forth with power, with anointing and with clarity and reach the hearts of your people, O oh God. And it will cause change and transformation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. This is Diane. And I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you today with another word from the word of God. And it is always my hope that when we get to the end, you are motivated, you are encouraged, you are uplifted, you feel your strength coming back. Those of you whose strength has been waning, I give God thanks even for this opportunity to be able to share with you in this manner every weekday morning. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your support, your encouragement. And I also thank you for the way that you support and encourage one another. Because that's what it's all about, friends. We're here to help each other. Iron sharpens iron. And I like the camaraderie between even you guys. Some of you met right here on this program isn't God good he's the one that sets up these divine connections that's exactly what they are because he knows all things he knows best he's sovereign he sets us up from time to time in ways that we do not even understand you know yesterday I was reflecting on the way the Lord set some stuff up the way that he causes us sometimes to meet some people at some places at a particular time 
and at the time when you met them it's like okay you know you have met someone new but you had absolutely no idea that the Lord had other plans for that meeting for that connection so friends let us embrace what God is doing in this time let's embrace the way he is drawing his remnant together from all over thank God for technology some people curse technology they don't like it they say it's too much and it's gonna get us into trouble and yes if we do not know how to use it effectively yes we can get into trouble but I give God thanks for technology I give God thanks for Facebook yes because it is a platform that has opened up for us to further the kingdom of God right here on earth again some do not like using it but I tell you I give God thanks I also give God thanks for YouTube because these are ways that we are using to take the gospel around the world have you ever noticed that something will happen in Africa and within seconds it's all over social media and everybody knows I mean it's it's good and it's bad but I'm saying let us use it for the good let us use it to lift up the name of the Lord let us use it to encourage one another let us use it to our advantage to do good all right just had to drop that quick one in there before we get into this morning's topic or just a reminder the Lord wants to remind us today that he is our help and our shield yes he is yes he is I got excited you know when I checked out that title today because I can testify that the Lord has been nothing but my help and my shield in so many ways and you could testify the same because God is just good let me share with you today from our book I call it our book I hope Miss Yolanda is here already you know joined in because you know she's one of them that went out and got the book it's uh, Jesus always uh, by Sarah Young it's embracing joy in his presence and today's word for us I can't believe today is the 19th day of July already the 19th of July 2019 I'm telling you the time is getting short all right so today the Lord wants to remind us of the following. He's saying to us, I am your help and your shield. Pay special attention to the possessive pronoun, your. I am not just a help and a shield. I am yours for all time and throughout eternity. Let this forever commitment strengthen and encourage you as you walk with me through this day I will never leave you or forsake you you can depend on me because I am your help you don't need to fear your inadequacy when the task ahead of you looks daunting rejoice that I stand ready to assist you openly acknowledge your insufficiency and the trust in my infinite sufficiency you and I together can accomplish anything as long as it is my will you definitely need me as your shield I protect you from many dangers physical emotional and spiritual sometimes you're aware of my protective work on your behalf but I also shield you from perils you never even suspect find comfort in this assurance of my powerful presence watching over you fear no evil my cherished one for I am with you hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord 
let us give God thanks for his word to our lives today. Let's give him thanks because so many times we need to be reminded of the role, the many roles that our great God plays in our lives. He is our help. He is our shield. When we talk about shield friends, we're talking about protection. He guards us. He defends us. He covers us. He screens us. He shades us. He keeps us in safety. He provides security for us. He's our shelter. He's our safeguard, our support. That's who our God is. That's him being a shield for us. Let's look at some passages here. Psalm 33 verse 20. In the New King James Version it says, Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Do we do that, friends? Do we put our hope in the Lord at all times? Or do we become flustered when things start to go wrong or when they're not going as expected? Do we trust in the Lord or we start to fret? Are we programmed to worry every single time something just doesn't go too right? Well, according to our expectations, that is. Let us hope in the Lord. Let us not be too quick to become anxious. Let us not be too quick to worry about those things that the Lord says that he has already taken care of. We do not exercise faith when we worry, friends. Let us trust God to do what he says he's going to do. In Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, it says, And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. In this account, friends, it was when Moses was handing over the people to Joshua. Of course, you know, the Lord had already told Moses that he would not enter the promised land. And he raised up Joshua to take over. So Moses was giving Joshua an assurance that the Lord would go before them. So he had nothing to fear. He said, do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. Do you know what that is like, friends, for the Lord to go ahead of you and to make every crooked path straight? For the Lord to show up in places that you are headed. So you are concerned and you are worried about what's going to happen when you get there. But the Lord has already gone ahead and pretty much cleared the way, cleared the path so that you can come in and do what you have to do those things that he has ordained you to do. Whatever it is that's in the will of God for your life, you don't have to worry. Regardless of what seems like obstacles, he will help you to hurdle over them. So Moses told Joshua, the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. That's the thing right there, friends. We have this habit at times and I'm speaking to the real people now who are not afraid to admit this we have this habit to think that every single time something goes off course that it is a sign that the Lord is no longer with us so we say things like you see I knew this wasn't God's will you know even though he had already given you clear instructions and directions and you followed them now would you go if the lord told you before that there were gonna be obstacles of a certain kind i don't think a lot of us would go if the lord told us beforehand that hey i'm sending you on this journey i'm giving you this assignment but this and that and that and that is going to happen you're gonna be persecuted greatly you're gonna be lied on 
you're going to be found in all sorts of confusion and strife and mix up. If the Lord told you that beforehand, would you still go? <clears throat> Excuse me. Would you still go? A lot of us, truth be told, we would say, no, God, uh, thanks, but no thanks. I'm okay over here. But I'm saying, friends, not because you are on the journey called life and things sometimes go out of order or out of alignment. And we're thinking that God is no longer in control and he has abandoned us. He has failed us because we don't understand that even some of the things that causes us to cry, that causes us to feel hurt at times is a part of the plan of God. Some say, well, how? You know, why would the Lord take the light then in my tears or in my hurt? Listen, friends, there are some things that you would never know that you could withstand unless you were thrown in the midst of it. And that's how the Lord trains us. You have been hearing me say it all week that the training has to match the assignment. All right. That is the truth. That is the revelation that the Lord just dropped in my spirit to share with you that those things that we see as extremely difficult, it's a part of the training. It's a part of what he allows to happen. No, it doesn't mean he's the one that sends it. You know what I mean? It's like we, we believe that every bad thing is just punishment from God. He's punishing me. He's punishing me. You know, he, he, I'm not, I'm not, you know, up to standard. I'm not up to par. So he's punishing me. No, friends. The devil is a liar. The Lord allows them, allows the hardships so that you can be strengthened. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It means then that we're not alone and we're not acting on our own. We are not self-sufficient. We have to rely on God. When we become too confident, that's when we can fall down. Confidence is good, but our confidence must be in God not in ourselves, not in our own abilities. Yes, we know that we carry particular abilities. The Lord has gifted us. He has given us these talents and he allows us to just do our best at times. But hey, anything that we're doing that we're not anointed to do, it will not have the same effect. You understand? You can get up and just act in your gifting without the anointing and it is not as effective so you have to wait on the lord and trust him and let him lead let him lead the process don't run ahead and then ask the lord to bless what you're doing it doesn't work like that it doesn't quite work like that ask the lord to lead and direct you and when you have done that and, you know, you see the obstacles come up, then you don't worry because you say, you know, God, I checked this with you. You know, you gave me the green light on this. So I'm not even going to let these obstacles phase me. I know what you have given me to do. Sometimes the devil comes to discourage and he tries to push you off course. Sometimes when you are doing God's work, not sometimes, all the time. He comes to discourage. It's just like when Nehemiah was rebuilding the walls, the broken down walls of his country. And Sanballat and Tobiah, they came around to discourage and to get him to come off the wall. And things got so bad where Nehemiah was on the wall with, with, with weapons and all. He was working and he was watching because he made up his mind that nothing was going to deter him or distract him from doing what God had sent him to do. The Lord had provided the people, the Bible said the people had a mind to work. So that's what happens at times. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Sometimes he sends you divine helpers. He puts people in your life to help you to get to that place that he wants you to get to. So you have to be so alert, so vigilant to know when God is sending help. You know, sometimes what we do, we push the help away because it did not come wrapped up in the package that we're expecting. It didn't look too good. 
So we reject it. But I'm saying to us today, friends, let us pay attention to what God is doing in our lives. Let us pay attention to those people that he's sending our way to help us. To help us. It's not to set us back or to make it because all right some maybe maybe some of you are like me um when i'm working i i can work very well with a team but a lot of what i do i am one of those persons that feel it's done best if done by me because sometimes you you ask somebody for help you know i'm, I'm explaining something here sometimes you ask somebody for help and they they do such a a messy job. I, I'm not a perfectionist, but I like when some things are done in a particular way. Not to say you cannot achieve the same results, but I don't I don't work messy for all right. Classic example. My husband and I we operate like a kitchen, right? We we work in the kitchen and this is not to say well, you know, he's <laughs> terrible or I'm good. No, it's just a comparison I'm making here to make a point. No, I like to clean as I go. But if he is handling, like for example, we're doing, um, um, you know, when you, you do the Southern fried chicken, well, we, we call it crunchy fried chicken and you know, you dip it in the flour and so on. And you know, for him, the flour will be all over the place. For me, no, no, all the flour has to be right in the container where it's supposed to be. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So I would rather like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. But I don't need help then because I don't want it to be messy like that. So that's what I mean, right? Some things we think is best done if done by us so we don't accept help. Well, that cannot work. When the Lord has set people in our path to help us, let us not reject whom God has sent because they don't do it like us or they don't operate like us. We, we make a lot of mistakes in these areas, friends. When we reject people because they don't look like us, they don't speak like us, they don't just, they're just not us. They're different. So what do we expect? You understand? Let us check and see instances where we have been doing that. And let's fix that. Let's ask the Lord to help us to fix that. Otherwise, we're going to miss God. All right? We're going to miss God if we allow the package to deter us because it doesn't look like what we were looking for. Just to go off on a little tangent here now. Those who are waiting even to be married, sometimes the Lord sends the person to you and you're like um no he's not tall he's not dark he's not handsome so i don't want this one or he's not this or he's not that i'm, I'm even speaking to ladies now because i think uh we are the ones that are more guilty of this at times we have these ideals and we're we we we, we cover them up by saying um, we're not going to settle. I understand that, you know, God gives the best to those who leave the choice to him. I get that. But let us be careful about looking for this perfect package because there is no such thing. All right. There is no perfect pa package. The, the person will be perfect for you, but they will not be perfect. All right. Many times my husband and I, we have well, me, I, yeah, I quarrel with him about even that same scenario I gave you. But my husband is perfect for me. I'm just saying, right? Let us not be fooled by how the thing looks on the outside. It's what's on the inside that counts, really and truly. So that is for somebody, you know, who is being courted by somebody who the Lord sent, but the package don't look too right and you're about to shove it on the outside and say, no, it can't be this. All right, just pray and ask the Lord to open your eyes and show you what he's doing. All right, that was on the side. The Lord just asked me to set that part and I leave that there. But back to the Lord being our help and our shield. Psalm 23, 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
Listen, friends, the first time I got an understanding of this verse, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, different people have different meanings for that verse. But when I heard the word shadow, I said, what is a shadow? You know, a shadow is like a, a reflection. Well, t something like that you know, on the dark side. But it's, it's the shadow that you're going through. It's not death itself. Some people act like they're dead already because they're going through something. Do not fear, friends. Do not let fear cripple you. Do not let fear cause you to not achieve or accomplish those things that the Lord has set before you. When you're going through the valley, when you're going through those low places, even if, even if it looks like death, you go with God. Fear no evil because the Lord is with you. Sometimes folks threaten you, like literally, I'm talking real stuff now. Even in Christendom, they threaten you and they say, if you do this, I will do that. You know, sometimes even as messengers of God, those who speak God's word, those who speak on behalf of God, who speak to people and, and churches and communities and nations, sometimes very, the very people, you know, those religious people do not want to hear them. So they try to shut them up. And sometimes they even go as far as threatening them and saying, if you continue to speak like this, you know, we're going to do this. It's nothing new, friends. It's nothing new. They did it in the times of Christ. So many wanted to kill him. When he said and he spoke certain things, they became offended and they wanted to kill him. But it wasn't time. So, you know, he would just take, take himself away from their midst. He wasn't trying to get anything to happen before it's time. So he used wisdom. So I'm saying, friends, there are times when you find yourselves in situations that you, you, you literally feel like you're dead already <laughs> because of how severe right, the circumstances are. But the Lord is saying to us today, fear no evil. I am with you. I am here to comfort you. So do not fear. Do not be afraid. Be courageous. I am here with you. Remember that, friends. The next time the adversary comes to threaten your life, just tell him back up and speak God's word because God's word is true. All right? The Lord is there to help us. He's there to shield us, to cover us, to protect us. Let us not put ourselves carelessly in harm's way, but only do what God says to do and he will cover you. All right, I want to pray now. I want to pray for us and ask the Lord to help us, to continue to help us, to continue to be our shield. A shield from those things that would come to hurt and to harm us. A shield from those things that we call them at times evil workings. Some people say, Oh, I don't believe in that. It's not about believing in it. Not because you don't believe something exists means it doesn't. All right? The adversary, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He didn't come to seek friends. He's not here to make friends. Some people have embraced him. Yes, they have. But the ultimate is death. He uses and then he discards with. He just uses and put aside. That's what he does. But today, let us remember the word of the Lord, that he is with us. We should fear no evil. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. The Lord will go before us. So let us not fear. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you today. We bless your holy name, O God. We lift you up because you are great. Lord, you deserve every word of praise that we utter towards you. Sometimes words fail us, O oh God, and we're not able to express ourselves adequately. How we feel about your love towards us, your unconditional love, your unfailing love. Every single day, Father, every single day, you have shown us your great love. 
And Lord, even as you love us, you even ask us to love one another. Help us, O oh God, when we fall short in that area. Help us not to become comfortable in that, in the fact that we sometimes do not love the way we should. We do not care the way we should. Lord, you being our help and our shield is an example to us of how we should live. So help us, O oh God, not just to read your word and to take it in for ourselves, but we do not apply it to our lives and act on it and do it. Help us to become doers, O oh God. Lord, help us in our faith. Help us in our areas of unbelief. Those things that you have already spoken, but we doubt. Help us, Father, not to ever, ever doubt your word, but to believe everything that you have spoken to our lives. Lord, today we turn over everything that makes us anxious to you. Every area, anything, oh God, that's lingering in our hearts and in our minds that is keeping us unsettled. We turn them over to you now. That project, oh God, that you have asked us to do, that assignment that you have given us. Some of us are fearful, but Lord, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Help us to carry out these assignments, O oh God, in obedience to your will and to your way. Help us, mighty God, not to shirk our responsibilities, not to neglect our spiritual disciplines, those things that draw us closer to you so that you can continue to have this relationship with us. That's what we want, God. A genuine relationship not just lip service not just saying things because they sound good but Lord we want to know you from our hearts so that when our lips speak it only speaks those things that are from our hearts oh God towards you which are real and genuine Lord I thank you for every person today that you have listening you know each of them. You are seeing them right now. You see everything that they are facing. Those who are struggling financially, oh God. I pray that you would show them the way. Lord, if there are loopholes in their lives that's causing this struggle, I pray, God, that you would bring clarity to show them what's going on, what's taking place. Yes, Lord, we know that the devourer comes at times to devour. But Lord, you can teach us. You can show us the way. Help your people, oh God. Help your people. Do not bring them to shame. Do not let the enemy triumph over your people, mighty God. Some are looking at deadlines and they are worried. They are concerned. Lord, we are saying... Your word is saying be anxious for nothing, but some are really anxious. So Lord, I pray now that you would bring peace to their heart and to their mind, that you are taking care of them. You understand what they face and you're taking care of business, even behind the scenes. So I thank you now, God, for what you're doing. Those who are having marital struggles, relationship struggles, separation those who desire restoration to come reconciliation lord i pray that you would make a way because there is nothing that's impossible with you lord so many lives are being affected right now because of third parties and what the adversary has done but lord you can turn things around according to your perfect will for the lives of us, your people. Mighty God, help us today. Help us, Lord, those who are struggling with their children, those who do not know what's going to happen next. Yes, some are home on holidays, but they're already thinking ahead. What's going to happen when the school term begins again? How am I going to manage? Some are already way ahead worrying and thinking lord help us to remember that your word says we should not be anxious help us to relax 
in you knowing that you will not start something in us and leave it undone. Lord, we trust you. We trust your word. That's all we have to hold on to, oh God. And we believe it. We would not let fear and doubt cause us to miss what you're doing in our lives. So today, God, keep your hand on your people. Guard them, guide them, protect them. Do not let them fall into any accidents. Lord, you have kept us from things that are seen and unseen. And I thank you, God. And Lord, we ask you to keep us, keep us in your loving care. The adversary would love to destroy us, but Lord, you are there to protect us. So we thank you today. Thank you, God, that as your people even go out to work, those who are working, that you would give them a productive day. Give them that sense of accomplishment when the day is done that they worked as unto you and not as unto man. Thank you for these constant reminders, oh God, that we're working for you. So Lord, thank you for your hand upon our lives. Thank you for your hand that will remain and abide with us, even now and forevermore. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Let us never cease to give you thanks, Father. Let us praise you in the good times. Praise you in the bad times. Praise you in those in-between times. Because you deserve it, God. You deserve to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name is worthy so we thank you god thank you father blessed be your name friends the lord cares for us he is our help and our shield the lord loves us with an everlasting love this is not cliche this is not you know a common saying and you've heard it all the time but you're just not feeling it or you're listen it's not even about your emotions our emotions lead us wrong many times many many times it's not about a feeling friends it's about what the truth of the matter is our god loves us and he loves us with an everlasting love nothing can change that no circumstance can change that. Sometimes others cause us to feel like we're unloved. Well, perhaps we're unloved by them, but not unloved by God. I sometimes mention to you that there are folks who come into our lives and because they're displeased with us, they try to let us feel as if because they don't like us right now, that God doesn't love us either. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. Our our stand in God, our stance in God, our position in God does not change because the devil doesn't like us. You understand? And that is why we need to know who we are so that when the devil comes with his lies, we can tell him, mm -mm, back up, not no go so. You understand, friends? Do not become so down and depressed because people are talking and they're saying terrible things about you. It's because these people are trying to find their own identity. I've said it before. If someone does not love themselves, they cannot love you. We have been made in the image and the likeness of God. The Lord took his time with us. Right? There are over, what, 7 billion people in the world right now. And there's a saying out there. You mean that of the 7 billion people in the world, you're going to let one ruin your day? Not today, friends. Tell the devil, not today. All right? Not today. Do not stay in a state of depression because so much is going on. And listen, even if you're being lied on right now, the Lord will vindicate you. Even if you're being fought for no reason because of jealousy or envy or whatever it is that the devil is coming against their life with. The Lord is there for you. He has the final say in your life. He will continue to bless you. 
Just stay with him. Walk uprightly. Walk blamelessly before him. It's not about perfection. It's about even if you fall, you own it. Do not try to sweep it under the rug. Own it, confess, and move on with God again. Do not stay at that place because that's what the devil wants. He wants you to feel so unworthy. And that's why sometimes he uses words, words from others to beat you down, to get you to feel like you're a failure and you're a nobody. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Know who you are, friends. Know who you are. Know what the Lord has placed you here to do. Walk in purpose. Walk in purpose. If the devil can get you to go outside of all of that, then he would have won. Do not give him that satisfaction. You do what God has called you to do and do it with all your might. Do it to the best of your ability. And when all is said and done, you will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Do not cause excuses or do not make excuses as to why you're not doing or you're not accomplishing what God sent you here to do. You think you're here living now just to waste time or to listen to the naysayers? No, friends. Arise. Arise. It's time to arise. It's time to get up and go and do what God said. All right? Arise. Arise and go and do what the Lord has asked you to do. All right? Wishing you all the best for this wonderful weekend. <laughs> Another wonderful weekend that the Lord has caused us to see. And listen here, friends. Stay with God and know that you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. You, yes, you, you shall live and not die. Even if you're feeling sick right now, the Lord will raise you up. I pray for your total healing and deliverance right now. I, I ask the Lord to touch you in those places that hurt. Those places that hurt. All right? I'm wrapping up. But he just reminded me that some are sick. And the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. Do you believe that God can heal you? Do you believe that he can touch you? It does not matter how sick you are or what the doctors have said, the diagnosis that they have given. Trust God. He's your healer. He's your Jehovah Rapha. Call upon his name. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Saved is more than even coming into salvation. Saved from that illness that is trying to take you out, it will not happen in the name of Jesus. So I'm declaring healing to your bodies right now, healing even to your minds. There are some who are going through issues that it's about to get to their mind and I'm declaring it that you will not, you will not go crazy. No, not under God's watch. No, it's not gonna happen. Do not take on anything that the Lord did not ask you to take on. Do not carry any load that the Lord did not release to you. Turn it over to him, whatever it is. All right? Expect God to come through. Do not carry anything and then mope and cry over it and the Lord did not give you that burden friends. The Lord wants you to live a wholesome life. Whole. He wants us to be whole. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. He wants us to lead whole lives before him. Okay? Don't worry. Be happy. Don't pretend now. Remember we talked about that. But don't worry. Be happy in the Lord. His joy is your strength. Think about the good things that the Lord has done, regardless of what else is going on. Think about the times when he brought you out before. You were sick before and he healed you. All right? 
this one is not unto death. It will not take you out. It will not kill you regardless of what you were told. I'm speaking to somebody this morning because the Holy Spirit just has me right there. I'm trying to move on, but he says, stay right there. All right? That diagnosis is your opportunity. It's an opportunity to prove who God is. The Lord loves when we give him a good challenge, you know. He wants to see how much we trust him, regardless of how we feel in our bodies at times. I know what it's like to feel like, all right, this is it, God. I, I, yeah, yeah, this is it. And when tomorrow come, I wouldn't be here. I know what that feels like. All right? Physically ill, sick, as unto death. And the Lord raised me up. Hallelujah. He raised me up. I was going through the valley of the shadow of death. But the Lord brought me through. He pulled me out and he set my feet upon a solid rock. And that is why I declare his name with boldness because of what he has done. He's giving you a testimony, friends. He's giving you a testimony. That's what this test is all about. He's building a wonderful testimony one from which he will get the glory. It's not about you. Sorry. Sorry to put it like that, but it's the truth. It's not about you. He loves you. He cares for you. But it's about his will being done on the earth. Okay? So you'll be fine. You will be fine. You tell that sickness, you're healed. You tell that sickness you're whole. You tell that sickness how big your God is. And watch and see. You will pull through and you will testify. All right. So that's it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> yes, I love to obey God and do exactly what he says. He'll take care of the rest. All right. So all the best, friends. Today is Friday, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. But I usually say, thank God I'm free. And today, God is first. He's first every day. But we take it one day at a time. One day at a time. All right? So may the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again on Monday. According to his will and his plan. Enjoy your weekend. And stay out of trouble, all right? Don't curse anybody today. <laughs> Leave them under the blood. All right? Don't do it. Yes, somebody was about to go to work and set a record straight. Nobody with it. The Lord say he has already taken care of that. Because the enemy you see today, you shall see them no more forever. All right? Trust God. Trust his word. Heed his warning. And you'll be all right. You don't have to fight this battle because it belongs to the Lord. You're already a, a winner. You're the champion. All right, friends? Okay, until we meet again in this fashion, take care. God bless you.